All right, guys, so welcome to this uh, transit video on channel. Now, as you can see in the title of this article, it has to do with the Port Jefferson branch and as well as the Long Island Railroad. So in this video, it would favor more towards my viewers from Long Island, specifically in the North Shore and on the Port Jefferson branch, as well as for the ambassador of the branch. And that is Mocha 18. So as you can see there, it says that this has to do with the Lawrence Aviation site. And that, and that the MTA has reached a tentative agreement. So let's get to it. The MTA has reached a tentative deal to acquire land at the former Lawrence Aviation site in Port Jefferson with the goal to transform it into a Long Island Railroad rail yard, which more than likely will be the yard in which the Port Jefferson branch will use. So this, uh, this huge space that you see in this picture will more than likely be converted to a yard for the Port Jefferson branch. And this was confirmed by the Transit Authority's chairman and the Brookhaven Town Supervisor. The creation of a yard there has long been considered a necessary step toward the potential electrification of the reliability challenged for Jefferson Line. At a state budget legislative hearing in Albany on Wednesday, the MTA chairman and CEO, uh, General Lieber, revealed that there is an agreement in principle to acquire land at the Superfund site, uh, which since 2016 has been eyed by the MTA, the state, Suffolk, and Brook Taven Hound officials as a potential location for the for the yard for a Long Island Railroad yard. Federal prosecutors last year approved a settlement that made most of the site available for redevelopment, ending years of legal limbo for the property. As part of the settlement, the property was taken over by the Suffolk County Land Bank, Land Bank, a not for profit corporation through which the county redevelops tax foreclosed properties. County officials did not immediately respond to questions about the potential deal, including the purchase price. County officials had previously said they were negotiating to sell up to 42 acres to the MTA. Ahead of his testimony, Lieber said he spoke to County Executive Edward Romain on Tuesday to touch base. There's an agreement that's being subject to all the lawyering. Lawyering. There's all kinds of little issues. We're going to keep working on it and trying to move forward as best as we can. Lieber said responding to a question from Senator Mario Matera. Republican from St. James about the property. I don't know everything about those specifics, but I do know that we have an agreement in principle. Brookhaven Town Supervisor Daniel Panico on Thursday confirmed that the MTA has been in contract to acquire property at the Lawrence Aviation site since December 27. MTA officials will not provide further details on the deal, instead referring to Lebo's testimony, in which he called the site the best opportunity to create a yard for the Port Jefferson Line. Service on the branch historically has been constrained because its tracks are not electrified. Diesel engines that serve Port Jeff customers are typically less reliable than the electric trains, which make up the majority of the Long Island Railroad's fleet. Diesel passengers are often required to transfer to and from electric trains when traveling into and out of New York City. Specifically in that situation would be if you have a Port, Je Port Jefferson train leaning from Port Jefferson going towards New York City. In that case, they would have to change... Um, at Huntington for that electric train. But there could be a situation where sometimes the diesel could go all the way from there to New York City. If in that case, uh, the, the locomotive has some sort of third rail capabilities. Although the MTA has not committed to electrifying the branch, a potentially expensive proposition for the agency it has studied capacity improvements on the branch and included electrification of the line among several projects under consideration in its recently published 20 year needs assessment a very important uh document in which i did cover on this channel so if you guys want to check it out here's the thumbnail as i'm showing you right now please check out that video in which i do give a rundown of this specific project and that is capacity improvements on the port jefferson branch which include electrifying the the branch itself and as well as double tracking it and i don't think it also includes the 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 proposal of of the new yard but if it is then it should be there Libra said building a yard in port jefferson is a is a precondition for someday growing service for ranch customers it's a necessary first step lawrence aviation was declared a super fun site in 2000 with the discovery of trichlorothaline or tce a solvent used to remove paint and grease. Inspectors also found acid waste, oil, sludge, metals, and other toxic debris at the site. And the company closed in 2003. So I'm wondering if this is the same company that 
was building airplane parts. I'm wondering if that's the same company. Because if it is, then the fact that it's gone, well, something must happen. Maybe bankrupt. Maybe I guess the man stopped. Or who knows what happened. Maybe in this case, literally that's what happened. Maybe it got bankrupt or the man just went down to the point where they had to close it. So this was a well-written, organized article by Alfonso Castillo, who is practically at this point the face of Long Island Transit, Long Island Railroad Transit, because he is the one that has been there for years covering the Long Island Railroad. Uh, no matter if it's Valley Stream, where he's from, no matter if it's Grand Central Madison, no matter what it is, but he has been making a very good job in terms of covering uh, transit news in Long Island. So yes, this is definitely a game changer for the Port Jefferson branch. Because what this means is that there could be those possibilities where the project that they are considering, and that is to build a new, like the Bar yard for the Port Jefferson branch. What this means is that it could be a huge possibility that things could get started. Where, like what I was referring to a couple of minutes back, where I'm, where I'm talking about that they want to electrify it, that they want to add a double track. And so if you do all of that, you're talking about a huge turnaround for this branch. Because according to the last bits of this article, I believe it's somewhere. Where is it? Right here, where it says that historically service on this branch has been up and down constrained basically means inconsistent up and down you never know the main reason could be due to the fact that it's not electrified i remember when it comes down to these diesel locomotives and again this is something that was told by the ambassador of the branch mocha 18 and she said that the noise of the locomotive it doesn't seem to bother anyone so I guess the complaints is not there because look, I am not going to be the one to label uh, the folks around this branch as NIMBYs. I'm not because first of all, I don't know these people. And in that case, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say a word in this case. It's different for the IBX because the NIMBYs that are around the IBX, they are actually NIMBYs and they, and they don't want, uh, the IBX to be built because according to them, it's going to be a distraction to their quality of life, noise, pollution, you, you name it. But in this, in this case, this is, this is a whole different ballgame. We're talking about the railroad here. We're talking about the railroad and we're talking about something that would benefit this portion of the long Island road. Because when you refer to branches, the Port Jefferson branch is almost at this point. So uh, like in the middle of nowhere. At this point, because up, up there north, that's all you got. Like in the St. James, like in the Kings Park, uh, Stony Brook, all they have is the Port Jefferson branch and maybe perhaps a bus line. And look, I don't know. Maybe perhaps there is a bus line around. And there probably is because in Huntington, you do have it. In Port Jefferson, you also have uh, buses that go around there. But among the stations that are in between, like I said, like St. James, like Kings Park, you name it, Jamestown. Who knows? Maybe, maybe there is. And again, for the Long Island viewers that are watching this video, hey, look, you could comment on the on the video and and give me a breakdown of the bus lines that go through there. But this is very important. I think this is something that will provide a stepping stone, or in this case, this will sort of give a bright light or a green light in this case to a branch that hopefully someday could get improvements. Now, I believe once they put this site, this new uh, rail yard site for the Port Jefferson branch, I feel that now it will make more relevance to say, hey, you know what? Now that we made a new yard for the Port Jefferson line, I feel like we should now do more than just that. Because for the Montauk branch, they have their own stuff. But Port Jefferson branch, they, they need... They need some stuff to get fixed. And if you want things to get better, you're going to have to also double track it because there could be specific portions of the Port Jefferson branch that is just single track. 
and that that's not good because that indicates that more than likely there's low ridership look the same story could be could be said on the Ronkonkoma where it used to be a single track at a specific portion but once they double tracked it you notice a huge spike in ridership because by having double track you're boosting service you're increasing it and that is obviously going to attract riders because look we're talking about a situation now where it's just simply too expensive to own a car. Hey, look, if you want to deal with insurance, if you want to deal with registration, not registration, but inspection, if you want to deal with having to change the oils, the brakes, whatever it is, that's a lot of money. And honestly, look, these days, it's hard. People, I'm not saying everyone cannot afford it, but I'm saying it's, it's, it's something in which I call convenience. And some people just rather do it the old-fashioned way, and that is take mass transit. For example, if I was in Long Island, I would even consider going there. I'll probably have to get a car because everything there is basically, you know, suburban style. Not like New York City where there is so much around. Trains, buses, dollar vans, you name it. Specifically Flatbush where I live at, but um, Long Island is a whole different ballgame. And I feel that it it is time that those that live in this branch of Port Jefferson, that they deserve better because... Now that there is no complaints in terms of the noise, you could also bring up another point, and that is climate. And and when I refer to that, I'm referring to the diesel trains that you know they pollute all that smoke into the sky, to, to the to, you know to the atmosphere. And this is not good because we're not really supposed to inhale that, and that's not really good for the environment, because stuff like that could affect the air quality and. Mind you, once again, now we have to go back to the whole concept of Long Island. It's a suburban like of an area or the or the areas that surround the branch. They are suburban like and I'm almost certain they have a lot going on over there. And more than likely, the folks that live around there, they they take life seriously, quality of life. And we wouldn't want our air quality to be bad just because, oh, you have a train going down. So in that case, I agree. If they electrify it, then dump those uh, diesel trains. They could get out of here. And with that in mind, you could bring in, maybe it could be M7, it could be an M9, whatever the case is. But you need to build this yard. And I agree. The good news, at least, is that they bought it. They're going to make the yard. And from here, I personally think MTA must, they must do something to improve this branch. And if they agree and they include the Port Jefferson Branch Capacity Improvements Project, which once again is in that video, 20 year needs assessment. If they make this happen, I could assure you this branch is going to turn around and become probably one of the most important in the Long Island Railroad because of the distance of where it goes. Because look, from that part to New York City, that's a long stretch. And if you double the, the service, if it's reliable and if it improves ridership, then what I'm saying is it's going to be a huge win. For the LIRR. So with that, this is just an update in terms of the Port Jefferson branch, in terms of what is going on. What I could say right now, as I end this video, is that it is positive by them, meaning the MTA, buying the site. It should give a clear indication that the folks within the area, local elected officials, they worry about the branch. They want to see improvements. They want to see a turnaround. And by having uh, a way to turn it around is by doing stuff like this, by creating a sort of proposal and by getting things done. This is getting the job done. And hopefully from here, we could see even better stuff. But in my opinion, by them buying this should also give an indication that it is a huge possibility that this project in regards to the Port Jefferson Branch Capacity Improvements probably will become reality. So with that in mind, that does it with this video. Like, share, comment, and subscribe.